In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I create flight simulator panels that are backlit using a couple of softwares. And uh, I'm actually building the first CRJ700 flight simulator that's going to be running on the new Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. So you'll want to like this channel, follow me, and as I progress with this project, you'll be able to see the finished product of that actual aircraft flying, which will be a ton of fun. I'm going to get started today and kind of show you a few little uh, shortcuts or secrets that I use when I create my panels. At first, you're probably sitting there going, what, what options do I have when it comes to designing the panel and then sending it off to my laser machine? I have another video that will explain how the laser machine works that cuts the panels. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about my software that I use and actually how I go, up, go about uh, designing the panels. So you have a couple of options. The first option that you have, and this is the one I would recommend, is check the internet, Google, and see if anybody out there already has existing panel files. If they do, you can just use or those. Um, if they don't, like in my case, the CRJ700, they just, nobody has these panels online. And the people that have them uh, hold on to them tooth and nail because they sell their panels and they don't want their files out there on the internet. So I'm actually having to create my own files for every single panel in my aircraft. And, uh, and I found a few, uh, few ways to do this. Uh, that you that might help you uh, get down the road a little bit faster. Before I get into what software I use, you need to start with some type of a base. And this is a great little secret that uh, hopefully will make sense to you. You can purchase from uh, some places online, and you'll have to Google it for your aircraft, but a complete poster board of your flight panels. And these are done in real size. You know, they're, they're sized in proportion to the exact size of the aircraft. And this is a tiny little picture on the internet, but I wanna zoom into this panel. And I, let me see if I can get this. Let me switch that over there. You can see the detail of those panels, right? And what you're gonna do is you are going to, let me back that out, you're gonna purchase that. And that's gonna give you the exact proportion of every panel that you need. And then the next step you're going to do is you're going to scan this in your scanner. That's right. You're going to scan the actual panel that you're working on and create an image of it that you're going to be able to use with a software called... Da -da -da -da. This is called Inkscape. And Inkscape is a free software that you get. You can download online and, you, and it runs with actual layers. And if you've ever used softwares with layers, just think of it as layering the image. So you could have your engraved areas in, all within one layer so that you can turn them on or off and so forth. But this is Inkscape here. And you can actually, uh, every now and then it freezes up and it looks like it froze up on me. So let me, let me quit it. That's the problem with some of these free softwares is you have to start them over again and uh and i'm just going to open this one up one more time and uh and then we're going to go over here to file open recent and we're going to be right back to where we were okay so these are the layers right here and uh this is real important because i'm going to show you this one called import i created a layer called import and this is the scanned panel. Now in my case I didn't go get the poster board because I already had existing panels that are not backlit. They're just silk screened um, aluminum panels and I'm actually upgrading them to a backlit panel. So I have to work within the parameters of my simulator which has uh, specific widths and, and heights and, and so forth for each panel. So I'm having to take the, the original panel and retrofit it to my old panels and so they're very customized but if i did not have to do that and i could and i was building my own pedestal my center pedestal or or my glare shield um then i would 100 percent go with just scanning the actual uh, poster board and building it and then all you have to do is basically outline what's on the panel and this one i did make some adjustments so it's more in line with the original 
uh, like even my silk screen version of my panel was not correct. And so you'll see I brought my lettering down. I brought my some of my uh, switches and buttons down and I readjusted things on the actual panel to where they're they're more in proportion to what the original is. And and then uh, you can see that now that I just import that as a layer that you can turn on or off. And then that gives you your your final product. Now, when you're using a laser machine, you'll see that it has two different colors here. One is blue and one is red. The laser machine is going to cut on all the red spots and it's going to engrave on all the blue spots. So you can see that what's going to be engraved and what's going to be cut. Now you'll see, this is real important, you're going to see that this panel here is a complete square in the back. See how that's squared off? That's going to be my base panel. And I'm going to go over here and hit Curve. And you'll see that these little curves appeared right here. See that? So I actually, I'm working with two panels here, or two layers. One layer is going to be my curved layer, and one's going to be my squared layer. And I'm going to show you an actual real panel so you can see that. See how this panel, if I go like this, I've got two pieces of acrylic. One is squared off, and one has the curve. See that? And then you can see, the, see how the finished product is. The top layer is painted and it is engraved. So if we were looking at the same panel on the screen, you would see all the lettering in blue and you would see the cutout edges in red. If you look in that upper right hand corner right there, you can almost see an exact duplicate of how my cutout is, right? So when I cut this, I'm gonna actually use the same file but I'm going to turn on and off certain layers. So if I if I'm cutting the bottom piece, I'm just going to leave I'm going to cut it like this and I can turn off my engraved letters and that's what it's going to cut. The laser is going to run and it's going to cut out all these circles and that's going to be my base piece or the bottom piece and you'll see it right here it's actually clear, right? You see how, see how that's two different layers there? And what I did was I painted around the edges of that and where the screws go in to mount it. And then the next layer, of course, is going to be the top layer. And then I'm going to turn off my square at the bottom. And that's going to be the top layer there. But I actually leave the circles and everything turned on. But that will give you an idea of the top layer, which will have the engraving but it also needs to have the holes cut out in both layers. So my this file is not actually 100% done right. Uh, but but you kind of get the idea when you build your layers, you want you want this hole to go through both layers, you want this hole to go through both layers and these screw holes to go through both layers. But on the top layer, you don't want the bottom layer engraved. So that engraving is going to be on the top layer only. Now once you're done with this, you're going to save this as what's called an SVG file. So I go up here and I go save as, and uh, something's supposed to happen. There's my spinner. It'll probably freeze up on me again. But you're going to actually save it as an SVG file. And then once you have that saved, I'm going to come over here and just, let me just get rid of this one. There's a program called K40 Whisper. Let me close this down. And that's the problem. These softwares freeze a lot and they're a big pain in the butt to, to do to use sometimes because they do freeze up. But uh but there's one. Um let me come over here and let me exit. Just terminate. And let me go ahead and start back up. Desktop. So the way you start K K40 Whisper on um, on the actual Mac is you actually have to navigate to the directory and then you can execute the actual program. I'm at right now inside the K40 directory on my desktop and it says sudo python K40 Whisper Pi and then you put in the password to your uh, computer and then it's going to launch the program that's on Windows it just opens up but on a Mac you have to go through that process if you want to run k40 whisper on Mac now once it's on here I'm gonna say open design file and it's gonna open up your different de designs and you're gonna find the actual um, 
uh, the actual file that is your SVG file that you're using, and you're going to open it up. And when you open it, it's going to have it's. And I don't have the other one in front of me right now. Otherwise, I would should have been more prepared. But it's, I'm not. But you're going to see that these letters here. I mean that these colors correspond. See the blue and the red. The red's going to cut. The blue's going to engrave, and the blues might import as a raster engrave, and I usually do that. I run everything under raster engrave, and I'll run this usually about 100 to 140 uh, millimeters per second, and then the vector cut, I do 10, and I usually have to make three passes on the cut, two or three, depending on how, how clean my laser is. If it's not cutting very good, clean your laser. This right here allows you to position it. This matches up with, with the actual laser machine that where, where everything's located on it. So if I want to move my laser to the right, left, or so forth, I usually set a uh, an axis up that, that starts my cuts always in the same spot. That way I can use it kind of like a template when I lay them down. And I'll show you that. I'm going to actually show you another video of me actually cutting out the actual pieces, importing the file and actually cutting it. But I wanted to show you those the, those little secrets there. Uh, the secret of being able to go and grab one of these poster boards to get your panels in the event that your aircraft doesn't have one. And then of course, how to cut them out so that they're layered. And that allows me to put my hardware screws in here and mount them. And they're completely mounted. The, this is not glued together. These are just set together and they're held together by my hardware. And you can get real detailed in this. See how my the different um, hardware there, you have the, the nut and the bolt and everything uh, up on top. Well, you can actually engrave that so it drops down to the second layer so these sit a little bit closer to the actual uh, acrylic. So they could even sit down into the acrylic. So as you get better at it, you can get more creative in your design work and start producing some really nice pieces. You can see how nice that laser engraved. See how nice those look? I mean, really, really nice. And they light up very good. I don't know, let me see if I can, I guess I can't really show that, but but yep, yeah, so that's how I use the software. Um, I would say this isn't really a tutorial on how to design. That's something you're going to need to probably just go to Inkscape and on YouTube and watch some design videos. Basically, what you're going to be doing is outlining everything on a panel and then finding a font that's very similar to your aircraft and then laying down your lettering on top of it and learning how to do things like these were kind of challenging, these little circles with the arrows on them kind of little tricky things like that you'll just have to learn how to do in the software. But once you get them done and you make them, you'll have this specific file done and saved on your computer. And then anytime you want to create that panel again, you can print it out. And that, that makes it really, really cool. So I'm going to pause now and I'm just going to show you um, how nice these look backlit from a photograph that I took. And you can uh, just see the quality that's that's happening with it. Thanks.